This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, the founder of the highest paid part-time job in the world. And we're going to do Market Mondays for 12-21-2020. And to give you a heads up, give you a disclaimer, uh, this is not going to be financial information. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor, so I'm sorry. This is going to be information on finance. However, um, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have a securities license. So I want you to take this as information and education, right, based on the financial markets. And so one of the reason why we started this is because we were inspired to want to uh, make sure that, the, you know, the average person in our community starts getting some type of information about the markets that's not really hyped up. It's not over the top. Uh, it's not done by a bunch of people talking about how much education they have and where they went to school at. And it's not by, done by a bunch of guys in suits. It's done by people that look and act like the kind of people that you see in your community. So, you know, we don't just look like the kind of people you, you see in your community. We actually uh, behave like the positive people that you see in your community on a day to day basis. So let's go ahead and get into it. So today is 12, 21, 2020. And we want to talk about the market started off red today. Right. Um, and it really didn't do that well. And one of the reasons was because uh, there's news reports of there being this mutant strain of COVID in the UK uh, that's supposed to be uh, a lot easier to contract the disease uh, than the other strain. Uh, also, the UK is going to probably shelter in for Christmas. So there's a lot of concern and uncertainty around that. Uh, and so what we saw was that the market really didn't start off that well today. And, and for uh, certain indicators, it closed. It closed red. So for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, it gained around 0.1 percent. Right. So it did finally turn red towards the end of the day. The S&P fell, uh, closed around 0.4 percent. And the Nasdaq Composite, it closed around 0.1 percent red. So what we got to understand is that. And this has literally been Groundhog Day pretty much every Monday. So pretty much every Monday ever since COVID came out, based on how people felt about COVID that particular day is very much how the market uh, did that day. Uh, then normally over the course of the week, we kind of see whether or not the market repairs itself or it continues to go down. This is going to be a very short week because of Christmas. But we want to still continue to observe because it's going to kind of set up for next week. Right. So a lot of people anticipated with the news of the stimulus package going through that that was going to kind of boost the market for this Monday. However, the uncertainty around, you know, uh, a new mutant strain of COVID coming out right in the UK and then maybe potentially spreading all over the world. It kind of made the market come out red, kind of sluggish. Uh, the S&P to me kind of re recovered over the course of the day, but it gapped down. Right. So what I mean by gap down is that it opened up lower today than it closed on Friday. And so then it had to try to kind of repair itself. So let's get into the jump out. So we're going to talk about companies that either did really well today or did really bad. And kind of give you some context to them. So, you know, Tesla got added to the S&P 500. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, the S&P 500, I believe today, uh, Friday was the day in which I think you had kind of like the last run up before the actual addition of today on the 21st. And, and kind of what we saw at close was that, and I think I read this and I think you might want to do some research, was that this $45 or 6% drop was the worst fall after S&P induction or on the day of S&P induction that any company has ever, ever have. So essentially, since every company has been put into the S&P 500, they've never had this much of a fall on the first day than Tesla has had today. This is a major drop to lose $45. So it could kind of show that it kind of uh, uh, went in inflated, right? Um, and then as it merged into the S&P 500, a lot of people decided to take profit and go ahead and sell out, right? So I think there was a higher expectation. There was an expectation of higher demand uh, during the, the uh, normal market activity on Friday. And we saw really the big spike after market, right? We saw the big spike after market, but I think a lot of people's perception was that during the normal market activity, we were probably going to get maybe a 7, 750 jump. And that just didn't happen. We saw after market hit around 690 for a moment, start to come back down. So what we saw today was a lot of people just getting out of their position, especially as the day went on, right? Especially as we started to close, we started seeing a lot of selling off. Uh, and a lot of times when you see these long, those long, long bars that you're seeing on the right hand side, a lot of times those are HFTs, are high frequency traders. You know, that's why you're seeing that much selling in that short amount of time, because we're looking at one minute candles. So when you're seeing these long, long red bars right on the open and also on the close, a lot of times those are HFTs. Those are high frequency traders that have the ability to execute a lot of trades, literally thousands of trades in one second. Now we want to talk about Nike. So Nike had an earnings on Friday after close. Uh, one of the things Nike talk about is that they're able to repair their market in China. Their market is recovering even because of COVID. Uh, Nike has really, really good relationships in that part of the world. I was talking to somebody earlier today about how Nike 
is one of the companies that really kind of opened up that part of the world to American uh, manufacturing, also American businesses. They've done a lot of relationship building in that part of the world. And they've been doing it for literally over two decades. Uh, so they were talking about um, they're they're very optimistic about, re, re, you know, re, uh, gaining new revenue in that part of the world, repairing uh, their business in that area. And then also their online business uh, has picked up a lot. And I was also telling somebody that they invested a lot on the online space early. And so as a result, they're really not dependent on Amazon to sell their shoes online. Right. So they're able to sell their shoes independently, direct to consumer and not have to depend on uh, Amazon to facilitate that for them. So that gives them an advantage in the marketplace. Now, we're going to look at Goldman Sachs. So um, it came out today that I think the Fed told banks that they can do share buybacks. They're not going to be limited to that. And we saw a lot of the bank stocks run up. So we saw Goldman Sachs run up around six percent. So they're one of the uh, the major players in the market, major, major players. If you ever can get a level two information and kind of see who's pinning stocks. A lot of times Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan are pinning stocks and Goldman Sachs will literally be on almost every major ticker uh, in the market, which is amazing that they have that kind of coverage. And I used to tell people all the time that if you listen to earnings calls, pretty much on every earnings call, there's going to be a Goldman Sachs analyst. So they have that much coverage. Uh, they have that much influence on the market. So it wasn't any surprise that things are going their way because they're one of the major players in this particular space. So those are going to be the jump outs. And what I want you to kind of do is that, you know, get with your people, get with your group and kind of dig a little bit deeper and kind of understand why these companies moved the way they did to give a little bit of understanding of what's going on in the market today. Now, the topic of the day is, is going to be where do you get your info from and who do you get your market info from? Right. So we want to know where and who do you get your market info from? And this is a question I want to bring up because we're in this social media space. So like historically, all your market based information was in print or was on television, right? Maybe a little bit on the radio based on what part of the country you lived in. If you lived in Chicago or maybe Philly, maybe New York City, you probably had somebody on local radio probably doing some type of market based information, right? Um, but historically it was all print, right? The New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, uh, the Chicago Financial Times, the Economist, things of that nature. And then you also had like the television shows. Now, because of the social media era, there's people on Twitter, there's hella YouTube channels, you know, there's probably people on, I think there's this new kind of, they keep kind of remaking the same social media platform over and over again. So then there's this new platform that's kind of like Zoom for audio. I forgot what it's called now. I guarantee you somebody's going to start building platforms on that. You got people got communities on Discord like myself. So you have all these different places where you can get your market info from and who you may be getting your market info from. The question I want to ask you is that who are these people? So where are you getting your market info from and who do you get your market info from? And the reason why I want to ask you this question is that are you getting your market info from entertainers? And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you understand that that is entertainment. So if a guy's coming on television and his job primarily on television is to entertain you long enough for the commercial to come on. That's his job, right? Television is an advertising platform. If a guy's on YouTube, the same thing. If a guy's on YouTube with a monetized channel, his job is to entertain you long enough for the commercial to come on. Right. Or to get you to watch the video so you can see the commercial that's uh, essentially at the front of the video. There's nothing wrong with that. But you have to understand that their primary goal is to entertain. Right. So uh, when you're looking at platforms and when you're getting your information from people, ask yourself, is this person's job primarily just to entertain me? Are they just entertaining me? I was looking at a channel today and a guy has a, essentially a whole YouTube channel built around Tesla news. So he comes on three or four times a day and talks about whatever's going on with Tesla. He's built a very, very, very big channel off of that. Like his average video view probably is a few hundred thousand. However, his job as an entertainer is to just take a bullish point of view on Tesla. So you're really not getting a comprehensive understanding of what's going on in the company because his market, the people he's appealing to, are people that are bullish on Tesla. So his job is to get on there and just continue to be bullish on Tesla and then continue to uh, down talk anybody that may be critical or bearish on Tesla because he understands that's what that particular market wants. The question you want to ask yourself is that, is that a good person to get Tesla information from? Because he's decided that he's just going to be bullish on Tesla because he's trying to appeal to a market of people who are bullish on Tesla. And we got to understand is that until something negative happens in Tesla, that scares a lot of people. You're going to have a lot of people that are going to just ride the Tesla train. It's kind of like, you know, back in the day when you had like the super teams, like I remember the San Francisco team of the, uh, the late eighties, early nineties. Then you had the bulls of the late eighties, early nineties. You know, you had a lot of people that was fans of those teams because they was winning. 
And the only reason they was fans of those teams is because they was winning. Right. That's why they jumped on the bandwagon because they thought they was winning. They wanted to be associated with a winner. Once those teams started losing and they weren't the same team anymore, you couldn't find that fan base. The same thing with Golden State of the, of the 2000s. Right. Everybody was a Golden State fan. Most people can't even really tell you what city Golden State plays out of. But they was Golden State fans. Why? Because Golden State was winning. Right. Same thing when Brian went to the Heat. A lot of people became Heat fans. So you got to understand is that. You know, if 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 you're getting information from somebody and they've decided to just cheerlead a ticker, right, because that's the hot ticker right now. It's cool that they're doing that, but understanding that they're cheerleading a ticker because they want to appeal to that fan base of that ticker because that fan base may be a critical mask and it may be good for their entertainment platform. However, where do you get your market info from or who do you get your market info from? That's not just cheerleading. That may tell you something that you don't necessarily want to hear about a company. They don't have to tell it to you in a negative way. They don't have to tell it to you in a way in which that is disrespectful. But they may have some contradictory ideas about a company that you may think is the best thing since sliced bread. And are you getting that comprehensive information to where now you can make an informed decision, right, about what's going on inside the market? Where do you get information from the way you just consume the information and you don't allow another person's analyst to prejudice what you think about it? Right. Where it's just information. So you're looking at financials, you're looking at things of that nature and you don't let somebody else prejudice your point of view about a particular company. So you want to ask yourself these questions, because like I said before, until Tesla loses, right, until it loses, everybody, you have a lot of people going to be on that Tesla bandwagon the same way. Everybody was a Bulls fan in the mid to late 90s. Everybody was a Bull fan. Right. Because that was the winning team at that time. Then once that's not the winning team anymore, they got to find a new bandwagon to jump on. So this is going to be Market Mondays for 12 21 2020. This is David W. Williams, known as Diamond Dave. If you got this on social media, can I get to like? Can I get to sub? Can I get to share? If you got any questions, hit me up in the comments and I'll talk to you later.